Hello everyone, it's Shren here. Welcome to my room, guys. I hope you're well today. Today we're going to briefly mention, I'm going to briefly mention three movies that I think NI Dominance would love, especially INFJs. So if you're curious to hear about these movies, they're not super well known to a wide audience, but they deserve being better known. Uh, well, stick to, stick, to the, stick to me in this video. Uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that I have written a book on the INFJ type, The Ecstatic Soul. It's available. Look at this nice cover. It's very nice. I never get tired of it. It's available in paperback and ebook format at the links below. All the Amazon links are included in the description box. Uh, if your country is not included, let me know and I'll get back to you. Less than ten dollars is the deepest investigation you'll find online. If you find that you've hit a plateau, you, you'd like to learn more about the INFJ personality, but uh, you, what you find online is not satisfying you anymore, this is definitely the next step. A deep investigation of the IMG consciousness, existential challenges and opportunities. And there will be follow-ups. More uh, videos to come up on that front as well. Right, <clears throat> so let's get started. I have three movies that I want to discuss today. There could have been more, but I want to focus uh, this video on these three. If um, if this video is popular and there is a demand for more videos on this topic, I could also, you know, recommend more movies because there's other ones that I could also mention. And the same applies really to music and maybe to certain painters as well, you know, because visual experiences are always treasured by INFJs. Uh, these days I've been tempted to be I'm tempted to explore more of architecture because I think that that could be an interesting field to to discover in more detail as well. But let's get started. Three different decades. One came out in the 70s, one came out in the 80s, and one came out in 2014. So a slightly more modern one. So let's start maybe with the early one. 1792. No, that's wrong. 1972. It's almost as if I had some kind of dyslexia, but I don't think I have. Or do I? In any case, the movie is Solaris, Solaris, by Andrei Tarkovsky, Russian filmmaker. So I'm not talking about the Steven Soderbergh remake. I think came out in 2002 and had George Clooney in the main role. I've not seen this. I've not seen this remake, so I cannot tell you whether it's good or not. I have no doubts there will be some among you who've seen the, the remake, but there might not be many among you who've seen the original. The Solaris from 1972 came out four years after 2001 Space Odyssey by Kubrick. From a technical viewpoint, you know, Kubrick's film is, is very impressive and perhaps more impressive than, than Solaris's, uh, the Tarkovsky movie. And by the way, Andrei Tarkovsky, I recommend all of his movies. He's a 9FG director, very clearly, Mirror, Stalker. And, you know, uh, Andrei Rublev and Nostalgia, The Sacrifice, all his movies are worth binging on. If you're an NI dominant and you want to watch amazingly visual and philosophical uh, movies by an NI dominant, maybe the best of them all, you know, check out all his films. I want to focus on Solaris because for me, Solaris has qualities of the quintessential INFJ movie. It may not be as technically advanced as, as uh, 2001 Space Odyssey was, at the time it came out, but it doesn't mean it looks less advanced. In some ways, it, does, it hasn't aged as much because it relies a lot on natural uh, scenery and uh, on evocation of images through paintings, so real paintings and, and such. And uh, the movie is less focused, if you like, compared to 2001, it's less focused on these big metaphysical questions about the, the place of man in the universe. It's more looking at the impact that space itself has on the life of the particular man who is the main character. It, it explores time, it explores relationships. It does explore the meaning of life, the relationship between the time, the, the past and the present and the future, but it is from the perspective of that character, the main character in relation to his personal life, his personal relationships, his relationship with his wife. And uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It looks beautiful, it looks great, has a unique atmosphere. And the the NI is all over the place. The FE is very clear in terms of the universality of the themes. And it's just, it's just a gorgeous movie. It's a gorgeous movie. And I think that, you know, it's about two hours long, a little bit longer, but there are so many beautiful scenes. The music is amazing. 
and uh, I think you would be doing yourself a favor if you watched it. And I don't think it's actually that hard to find. So Solaris is number one, 19, 1972 by Andrei Tarkovsky. I list the, the film below in the description box. Now, the second movie that I want to talk about came out in 1980. So only eight years after Solaris. And this is actually an animated film. This animated film is called The King and the Mockingbird. And um, you may not know this, but it's originally a French movie. So Solaris, Russian. Uh, King and the Mockingbird is a French animated film, which was written by a poet. Um, one of France's better known poets at the time. And his name is Jacques Prévert. It's an incredibly poetic movie, again, with deeply resonant universal themes and visually stunning uh, scenery and, and drawings, and completely handmade. Perhaps the biggest influence on Miyazaki, if you guys are fans of the movies of Hayao Miyazaki, and I'm sure there's many among you who are, who love Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, Mononoke Totoro, and, and other ones, Nausicaa, the... Uh, House Moving Castle, Castle in the Sky. Well, Miyazaki considered that the um, King and the Mockingbird, this French film, um, 1980, spurred him to make the, the cinema that he made. And I would argue that it is just as good, if not even a little better than, than the best of Miyazaki's movies, because it has something extra and I couldn't really define it. Maybe it's something that Maya and I have found in it. You know, it's the story set in an, an imaginary kingdom with this enormous castle with this king whose name is, uh, <laughs> I, I won't even spoil you the name of the king, and there's a love story involved as well, and there's an incredible amount of surrealist events happening. It's only an hour and 20 minutes, it's gorgeous. It's a feast for an eye, the creativity of the environments, you lose yourself in it. It's relatively hard to find, but if you search thoroughly, you should be able to lay your hands on it. So, The King and the Mockingbird, 1980. I will also link, uh, link you the movie or the title to me down below. King and the Mockingbird, check it out. It's one of my favorite movies. And because it's short, it's easy to go back to. I think I must have seen it at least 15 times ever since I was younger. So, real important recommendation. And to finish, I want to recommend a movie, you know, to be a little bit more in touch with the times, as it were. A movie from uh, the year 2014, so that's much more recent. Um, came out, what, eight years ago at this point, I guess? Not so recent, but still qualifies as a contemporary-ish movie. And that's Winter Sleep. Now, Winter Sleep is a movie that is by a Turkish director. I don't know how to pronounce his name. His name is uh, Silan, would be his surname. You'll notice none of the movies I'm suggesting are American. Doesn't mean I don't like American movies. I probably watch a majority of American movies, especially a majority of American TV shows. Some of them are absolutely amazing. But it so happens that these three suggestions are also suggestions of films that you may not have heard of, and partly because they're not American. So Winter Sleep made a bit of noise when it came out, because it actually won the, the main prize, the Palme d'Or at the Cannes Festival in 2014. So it's not like it didn't make a splash. But you know how it is. It's still a demanding movie. That movie is three hours long. It's set in the heart of Cappadocia in Turkey. So the, the landscapes you can imagine are gorgeous. It's, like I said, it's, this one is longer than, than the other ones. And it's take, it takes its time. But it's an incredibly relaxing movie with the gorgeous landscapes with the perfect integration of the natural scenery, the color scheme, and the events that take place among the different characters. The main character in the movie is the owner of a hotel. He also has poetic aspirations. He likes to write. He's a fan of like some great writers, but he's primarily a hotel owner and he has a number of tenants also around this village. He's seen as this figure who is important to the village, who helps people in the village, but at the very same time, he uses the fact that he's such a dominant, helpful figure to crush others a little bit and to assert his dominance. He reassures himself about his importance by doing this. So he has this mastery over his environment and the people within this constricted space, absolutely gorgeous to look at. And the movie is a series of interactions with different people as the main character questions himself and his purposes and is questioned in turn by the people around him. And there's a fair bit of drama happening, but there's a very, very strong natural theme and there's almost no doubt that um, the director, Ceylon, is influenced by Tarkovsky, the one who made uh, Solaris. 
So um, I did not check um, CLAN's, CLAN's type, but I would really not be surprised if CLAN was also an INFJ. So Winter Sleep is a movie that if you watch it, you will not be the same person um, when you're done because it's a completely transformative journey for the main characters, for the people around them, in the place where he is, and for the, the spectator as he, as he follows his path. So it's a long, it takes its time, it can be a little bit wordy at times, also very contemplative, but it's absolutely worth it. The rewards are enormous. So Solaris, 1972, King of the Mockingbird, 1980, and finally Winter Sleep, 2014. Solaris is Russian, King of the Mockingbird is French, and Winter Sleep is Turkish. Check out those movies and let me know what you think. Give me a, a like, uh, please drop a comment, and consider subscribing. See you guys, bye-bye.